Recognizing the signs of perinatal depression is the first step to getting the support that you need. But before we hop into all the signs you can look out for, I want to share a very important spoiler. No matter how intense your depression may feel, it is highly treatable and it can be temporary. To start, what is perinatal depression? Perinatal depression is one of several perinatal mood and anxiety disorders that can show up during pregnancy or the postpartum year. These are also referred to as PMADS for short. While the specifics of this experience are a little different for everyone, in this video, I share seven common signs of perinatal depression that you can look out for. And just to clarify, you do not need to see all of these signs in order to be experiencing perinatal depression. That being said, if you are noticing any one of these signs, consider reaching out to a therapist who's trained in perinatal mental health who can help you walk through the hardest parts of this and get to the other side. The first pretty common sign of perinatal depression is having a sense that your mood is off or different in some big and consistent way. More days than not, you're just not feeling like yourself. This can look like feeling sad or empty or hopeless a lot of the time. Maybe you're crying or on the verge of tears all day. Naturally, this is what most people think of when they think about depression. So this is what your loved ones may notice or be looking out for. But depression doesn't always look like this. Maybe you aren't looking or feeling sad. Maybe you're feeling irritable or angry or even full of rage. Your loved ones may notice that you have a shorter fuse and you may notice that little things that used to get under your skin now feel like a massive overwhelming trigger. Here's the tricky part. Sometimes it isn't so obvious to the people around you. You may not seem depressed at all. From the outside looking in, it may just look like you're crushing it. And maybe logistically you are, but on the inside, it can feel like a different story. You may be secretly and silently feeling overwhelmed or stuck or numb. You may be feeling uninterested in or even resentful of things that you used to enjoy. And in some cases, this can even extend to your pregnancy or your new baby. A second sign to look out for is any changes in your appetite. Sometimes this looks like eating a lot more than usual, but sometimes it looks like losing your appetite entirely. So just keep in mind that any significant changes one way or the other could be a potential sign of perinatal depression. If your appetite has increased, you may notice yourself reaching for food more often as a way to cope with intense feelings. You may experience cravings for sugary foods, which actually do increase serotonin and boost your mood temporarily. Our bodies need food. And when our bodies are asking for more food than usual, there is a reason for it. Sometimes that reason is pregnancy. Other times that reason is to replenish the nutrient stores in your body after having a baby. But sometimes that reason is related to the physiological changes that happen in your brain and the rest of your body when you experience depression. So if you're noticing an increase in your appetite, it's not necessarily a sign of depression, but it could be. So it's definitely something to keep an eye on. If your appetite has decreased, you may notice that you don't have the energy or desire to prep the meals that you typically would. If you're spending a lot of mental energy trying to manage other symptoms of depression, food may become less of a priority and you may unintentionally skip meals without even noticing. Or you may feel hungry, but deciding what to eat feels too overwhelming. Aside from any unintentional and potentially harmful weight loss, under eating can also contribute to other depression symptoms like low mood or low energy or lack of focus. The third sign of perinatal depression to look out for is feeling exhausted. In some ways, feeling exhausted kind of comes with the territory of becoming a parent. Whether you're up all night with pregnancy discomforts or to soothe a crying baby, it's no secret that new parents sleep a lot less during this season of life. Even under the best of circumstances, decreased sleep will impact energy levels throughout the day. While it's hard to know for sure if your lack of energy is due to depression or lack of sleep, the truth is these two factors are connected and can impact each other. Depression can mess with your sleep and changes in your sleeping patterns can mess with your mood and your energy levels. 
When you're depressed, you may feel so tired that even routine tasks like taking a shower or taking care of your baby or even getting out of bed can feel heavy and hard and overwhelming. The fourth sign to look out for is if you just can't relax. Mentally, you may feel stuck in a loop of unwanted and unpleasant or even scary thoughts. Your mind is spinning and you're spending a lot of time thinking about the same thing over and over and over without any clear aim or direction. You wish you could quiet the thoughts, but the more you try, the louder they get. Physically, you may feel fidgety, on edge, or restless for most of the day. Despite your best efforts, it may feel really hard to slow down and rest even when you're given the opportunity. Even though you're tired, your body may just feel activated or generally uncomfortable. Because of everything you're experiencing mentally and physically, you may be moving around a lot more than usual. This could look like pacing or tapping or just moving things around your space for no clear reason. The fifth sign to look out for is that you've been really hard on yourself. Since becoming a parent, your self-esteem has taken a massive hit, and this could be related to anything from your body image to your perception of how you're doing as a parent to your perception of what others think of you. You may start to believe stories that sound like, I'm a bad parent. I am not cut out for this. I'm letting my partner down. Everyone is judging me. My family would be better off without me. These stories are really painful. And when we get stuck in these stories, it can make it really, really hard to connect with our personal values as a parent and just as a person on the planet. These thoughts can be a sign of depression when they feel overwhelming or take up a lot of your time and energy, or if you feel like they're getting in the way of you being the person that you wanna be. The sixth sign of perineal depression is a sense that it's really hard to focus. Depression can impact your memory, attention, and your ability to focus. A lack of focus can cut you off from the present moment, making it really hard to connect with yourself and with the people around you, including your baby. You may find yourself zoning out during conversations with your family or tuning out your baby's cries. A lack of focus can also make it hard to make decisions in your day-to-day -day life. As a new parent, you're suddenly faced with a mountain of what feels like really high stakes decisions, like how you want to feed your baby and where your baby will sleep and what to do about childcare. When you're depressed, even small decisions like what to have for breakfast can feel really big and heavy. The seventh sign of perinatal depression is a sense that you want to escape your life. When the world expects you to feel nothing but bliss at the arrival of your new baby, it can feel really scary to admit, even to yourself, that you're feeling trapped or having thoughts of somehow escaping your life. Your mind is so creative and cares so deeply for your well-being. When you're having an intense need for relief, it will work so hard to think up all sorts of ways to meet that need. Often this looks like numbing, distracting, or avoiding. You may have the urge to get in bed, pull the covers up over your head, and just stay there. Maybe you zone out for hours watching TV or scrolling on your phone. You may have strong cravings for food, alcohol, or drugs. You might even have secret thoughts of dropping your baby off with a loved one, driving away, and then not coming back. In very serious cases, you may notice urges to hurt yourself or to hurt your baby. If you are experiencing these urges, it is super important that you connect with support as soon as possible. If you don't have immediate access to your doctor or a therapist, you should do one of three things. So one, call a crisis line. I've linked some in the description. Two, call 911. Or three, visit your nearest emergency department. This will help you and your baby stay safe until the urges pass, and it will help you identify supportive resources to help you stay safe moving forward. Depression can feel really scary, especially during pregnancy and that first year with baby. But if you're noticing signs of perinatal depression in yourself, there's a couple things that I hope you'll keep in mind. The first is you don't have to do this alone. 
The second is, back to that spoiler I started with, depression is highly, highly treatable. And with support, you can absolutely feel better.